Welcome to sciencecover.com. In this session, we will look at resistance, how resistance occurs, how to calculate resistance, and a device called the resistor. First, let's complete the do now task. Use the prefixes to complete the table. Let's check our answers to the do now task. 1500 can be written as 1.5 times 10 to the power of 3 or 1.5 kilo. 1 times 10 to the minus 3 can be written as 1 milli or 0 0.001. 4 micro is 4 times 10 to the minus 6 in standard form, which is 0 0.000004. 0.05 can be written as 50 times 10 to the minus 3 in standard form, or 50 milli. 0.008 can be written as 8 times 10 to the minus 6 in standard form, or 8 micro. And 2.4 mega is 2,400,000, or in standard form, 2.4 times 10 to the power of 6. Let us begin by looking at what we mean by resistance. Resistance is a measure of how difficult it is for a current to flow through a component. It's caused when electrons try to move down the wire but collide with the metal ions. So a metal ion is the atoms that the metal itself is made out of, but they lose their outer electrons and therefore take on a positive charge, so we call them metal ions. When the electron tries to move down the wire, it collides with these ions, so they slow down the electron. So a high resistance material is a material which is more difficult for the current to flow. So we've got two diagrams here, one showing a low resistance material, one showing a high resistance material. And you can see that the electron is having greater success traveling through the low resistance material. Although it's still moving through the high resistance material, it's doing so at a slower rate. And so that means that less current is flowing. So for a low resistance, the electron is able to move fast, so we get a high current. But for a high resistance, the electrons move through the wire slower, and therefore we have a lower current. Now pause the video and complete task one. Let's check our answers to task one. A copper wire is made from copper atoms. These lose their electrons and become copper ions. A voltage can cause the delocalized electrons to flow in an electric current. As the electrons move, they collide with the copper ions. This slows down electrons, causing them to lose energy as heat. This is why the wires get warm. A high resistance will cause low current, whereas a low resistance allows a high current to flow. So the missing words here are current ions, electrons, warm, low, and high. In the second question, we had to label the diagram. So we've got the electron on the left-hand side, the electron path being represented by the arrows, and then the metal ions, which the electron is colliding with. And then we had to complete the path that the electron would take down the wire. So it doesn't really matter what path the electron takes, as long as when it comes across a metal ion, it collides with it and moves back a little, and then it can carry on its journey forward. Now let's look at how we can calculate the resistance. We can calculate the resistance using the current and voltage. 
If we take the voltage and divide it by the current, then we get the resistance. So let's use the symbols R, V and I to represent resistance, voltage and current. And we can write that R is V divided by I. We measure voltage in volts and current in amps. But the unit for resistance is the ohm. So we use the omega symbol, which looks like a horseshoe shape, to represent the ohms. I can place the equation into an equation triangle to help me rearrange it. So now if I'm asked to calculate V, I can cover up V and it tells me that V is I times R. If I'm asked to calculate I, then I can cover up I and that tells me that V divided by R will give me I. If I'm asked to calculate R, I need to cover up R and then I'm left V divided by I. Let's use an example. A lightsaber has a potential difference of 5 volts applied to it. If this produces 0 0.1 amps of current, what is the resistance of the bulb? Well, resistance, if I cover it up, is calculated by taking the voltage and dividing it by the current. So R is V divided by I. Now V is given to me as 5 volts and I is given to me as 0 0.1 amps. So 5 divided by 0 0.1 amps is 50. And then I have to place the unit ohms, so the omega symbol, after it. In example 2, a wire has a resistance of 3 ohms. If a potential difference of 18 volts is applied to it, then how much current will flow? In this case, I'm being asked for current, so cover up current, and it's the voltage divided by the resistance. Substitute in the voltage and the resistance in the correct places in the equation, and I get 18 divided by 3. So 18 divided by 3 is 6, so the current must have been 6 amps. Let's have a look at another example. What is the potential difference applied to a 20 ohm coil that has a current of 0.3 amps passing through it? Well, we want the potential difference, so we'll cover up the voltage. That tells me that it's I times by R. So V is I times R. I is 0 0.3 and R is 20. So 0 0.3 times 20 is 6. So the voltage must be 6 volts. Now pause the video and complete task 2. Now let's check our answers to task 2. The plug to a hairdryer reads 240 volts and 5 amps. Calculate the resistance of the hairdryer. So R is V divided by I. So we've got 240 volts divided by 5, which is 48 ohms. Calculate the resistance of a 200 amp current created by a potential difference of 0.4 volts. So R is V divided by I. So that's 0 0.4 divided by 200, so that is 0 0.002 ohms. A resistor has a voltage of 54 volts applied to it and 3 amps of current flowing. What is the strength of the resistor? So R is V divided by I, so that's 54 divided by 3, which is 18 ohms. Calculate the amount of current that flows in a 4 ohm resistor when 20 volts of potential difference is applied to it. So if we want I, it's V divided by R. So this is 20 divided by 4, which is 5 amps. Calculate the potential difference needed to make a 9 amp of current flow through a 40 ohm coil of wire. So V is I times R. So we do 9 times 40. So that's 360 volts. A student measures the voltage from a car battery as 12 volts. They measure the current through the car's electrical system as 3.5 amps. What's the total resistance of the car's electrical system? 
So r is v divided by i. So v is 12 and i is 3.5. So 12 divided by 3.5 is 3.42 ohms. We were then asked to complete the missing values in the table. The first missing value was 3 ohms, then 5 amps, 20 volts, 6 ohms, 8 amps, 70 ohms, and then 0 0.000008, .008, .008, which is 8 microvolts. Let's look at resistors and how we use them in circuits. A resistor is a device created to have a specific amount of resistance. This helps us to control the amount of current that will enter a component. And the symbol for the resistor is shown on the screen now. The outside of a resistor has coloured bands. These tell us how strong that particular resistor will be. When we place resistors in series, we can add them together to find the total resistance. So if I place a 5 ohm resistor in this circuit, my total resistance is 5 ohms. But if I add another 5 ohm resistor, I now have two 5 ohm resistors. So the total resistance will be 10 ohms. If I add a third resistor, let's say a 2 ohm resistor, I now have a 5 ohm, a 5 ohm and a 2 ohm resistor. The combined resistance of these three should be 12 ohms. Let's look at an example. In the first diagram, I have a 3 ohm resistor, a 3 ohm resistor and a 2 ohm resistor. So if we add 3 to 3 to 2, then we get a total of 8. So the resistance is 8 ohms. In the second diagram, I have a 5 ohm resistor, a 9 ohm resistor, and a 7 ohm resistor in series. So if we add 5 to 9 to 7, we get 21. So the total resistance is 21 ohms. In the third diagram, I have 8 ohms, 6 ohms, and 7 ohms in series. So the total resistance is 21 ohms. Adding resistors in series increases the resistance of the circuit. But when you add the resistance in parallel, it lowers the resistance of the circuit. So in the circuit in front of us here, we have a three ohm resistor, which means that the total resistance is three ohms. But if I add a resistor in parallel, then the total resistance actually decreases. So it drops to 1.5 ohms. If I add a third resistor, let's add another 3 ohm resistor, then the total resistance drops again to just 1 ohm. So each time I add resistor in series, I increase the resistance of the circuit. But each time I add a resistor in parallel, I decrease the resistance of the circuit. So in summary, if we have too high a current in the circuit, we should add a resistor in series, and this will increase the resistance of the circuit and lower the current. However, if we have too low a current in the circuit, we should add a resistor in parallel. This will lower the total resistance of the circuit and increase the current. Now pause the video and complete task 3. Let's check our answers to task 3. The total resistance of A is 6 ohms. The total resistance of B is 6 ohms. The total resistance of C is 18 ohms. The total resistance for D is 10 ohms. How does wiring resistors in parallel affect the total resistance of the circuit? 
Resistors in parallel decrease the total resistance of the circuit. The total resistance of two resistors in parallel will be lower than either one of the resistors alone.